Welcome to Native Voice TV. My name is Sundas Martinez. And I'm Siwa Fili Rose Amador. And together we are Native Voice TV. We are the indigenous people. Yes, we are. Well, we have a very special show and a very special guest. I'd like to introduce a good friend of mine. Her name is Kelly Gamboa, and Kelly is Apache. And Kelly works for the American Indian Education Center. Welcome, Kelly. Thank you. So what do you do at the American Indian Education Center? Well, <laughs> everything. <laughs> yeah, I've um, seen that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the program coordinator there. And um, really what that means is I do a little bit of everything. I drive the van to pick up kids. I make sure that we have um, daily program available. I'm a tutor. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I wipe noses. I do everything. Wow. <laughs> I do everything there. So it, it's for youth at certain ages, or what's we the provide program? services for K through 12th graders. Um, it's an after-school program. We also provide a, we have a healthy snack program in place too, because the kids are with us until about 6:30 in the evening. So we like to feed them, give them some good healthy food, some energy food, and mm -hmm. um, we do a variety of things with them. We do, um, of course, we focus on academics during the school year, but we also provide um, cultural arts projects for them. We try to get them involved in the, the Native American community by way of participating in events from powwows to um, Native Health Care Day at the, the Indian Health Clinic and whatever else we could really come up with. Mm -hmm. Oh, so they learn different crafts and so mm -hmm. forth? Yeah, we teach them everything from beading to basketry. Mm -hmm. Um, and of course, you know, me reading, math, and whatever else they need help in. But um, we like to focus on the the arts, uh -huh. you know, the the native cultural arts. How long has this program been available? Geez, I know it's been available for more than ten years. It originally started out as part of the Indian Health Clinic, mm -hmm. and um, then it uh, became part of the the old Indian Center that we had before. And when that folded, um, the parents uh, rallied together and decided to try to keep it afloat, and they did a good job of it. Um, Indian education became a, an entity of its own. They became a 501c3 nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And we've been at it ever since. And who's your director? Uh, Renee Samioa okay. is my program director. Okay. And um, he pretty much is the the office guy. Mm -hmm. You know, he does all the paperwork and stuff like oh, that. Oh, fun things. Yeah. <laughs> All that kind of so stuff. But he has been known to get in the van and go pick up kids and stuff uh -huh, too. And so. wipe noses too, right? Yeah. <laughs> so if anyone wants to give a million dollars to donate to the Indian Education Center, they can contact Renee. Absolutely. Or okay. Kelly. Or Kelly. Or Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> sure. She can handle that part of it, yeah. right? <laughs> so now you teach beading too, don't you? Yes. I'm also employed by the Indian Health Center Wellness Program. And I teach, actually, um, I teach all kinds of cultural arts. Mm -hmm. We do beadwork, shawl making, um, traditional regalia making. Uh, we've done gourd rattles, um, you name it, you know, whatever we could think of. Basketry is my favorite thing to mm -hmm. do, though. But we've done whatever we could think of, you know. Now, the baskets that you make, are those Apache baskets? Um, I make a variety of types of baskets. Mm -hmm. um, I do have one style, one Apache style basket that I am really good at. Um, it's a one rod basket method. Um, I also have Miwok, California Indian, in my ancestry, so I have, um, I'm a little more proficient at the California basketry styles. Yeah, it's very intricate work. I mean, it's really difficult to do all that stuff. It's just Actually, it's, it's, it's just, you have to have patience. Yeah. It's not really difficult. It's just, you just have to be able to pay attention and follow direction. So that would be a good thing to have your kids come in to learn patience, right? Absolutely. I mean, they're learning to beat, I mean, to weave something, but they're actually learning patience. And you know, you'd be surprised at mm. how well they pick up those kind of projects. Mm -hmm. um, I was really apprehensive about um, teaching basketry to third and second graders. I have grandkids that age and they're really just two of them are a handful. So <laughs> I was thinking a classroom full might be a little difficult, but they were so good about it. They just, you know, they want to learn. They, they love being part of the cultural arts projects that we do. And they really, they always amaze me. Everybody goes home with a basket when we do oh, that project, great. so. Yeah, I think it's good, so, you know, you guys take them out from in front of the TV and out from the video games and you put them there and they, and they learn. They have to learn to enjoy this stuff, absolutely, which is part of their culture. Absolutely. Over the summer, we did a summer program um, where we were just out 
in the parks and recs all summer long. We did picnics. We did just walks around the lakes that we could find. You know, we've we taken just, them camping too, haven't yes, you? Yes, we did. We we did a couple powwows this year. We took the mm -hmm. kids camping. Of course, we did make their parents come with them too because that's, <laughs> that's a little good. much. That's but yeah. it was good. It was good. They're learning how to belong to a community. Mm -hmm. You know, they're learning that they do belong somewhere. You yeah. know, and they're lear learning that they don't have to assimilate into the popular culture out there. Yeah. You know, they do have an identity, and they're you know they're all. A lot of the kids that we have in the program have been there for years. You know, mm -hmm. I have two or three kids that have been there since kindergarten and they're junior high schoolers now. Yeah, that's, that's really important for them to have some kind of belonging. It's very important. Because I remember when I was growing up, going through school, you know, I didn't fit here and I didn't fit there, but I kind of fit in the middle and it's just like I didn't have an identity for a while. That's you know, true. And I didn't that's have true. any roots, you know, because there was no kind of programs like that. Yeah, and plus we provide a safe environment for them to come mm -hmm. to. We're absolutely alcohol and drug free all the time. Um, we also, of course, have to keep an eye out for abuse and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So the kids know when they come to us that they're safe there, that nobody's going to harm them. Nobody's going to try to give them drugs or try to, you know, um, change their way of thinking. And that they, when they come to us, they can be who they are. They can relax and, and you know, they all know each other really well because, like I said, they've, they're kids who've been in the program for a while now. And it's a good thing for us, too, to see them grow up and, and see them have healthy habits and, you know, um, see them, like if I go to a powwow, it's really nice to see a kid out there dancing that I knew since mm -hmm. kindergarten and stuff like that. Yeah. So. so you integrate the cultural aspect of it with the academics as well, right? Absolutely. Because even with the beating, don't they have to learn how to count certain ways and divide yeah. and figure yes. out? All the <laughs> Absolutely. There's a few beating projects that you have to know multiplication Great. and division, you know, and so we try to incorporate those cultural values whenever mm -hmm. we can. Also, too, when we're just focusing on academics, we always incorporate um, the, the traditional behaviors. We talk about respect. We talk mm -hmm. about... That's good. Um, you know, the way we treat each other. We talk about respect for the earth and the plants. We're, we're at a location right now that's really nice. There's flowers, there's gardens everywhere. And of course, when we first moved there, the kids wanted to run out and pick all the flowers and, you know, <laughs> climb all the trees. And, and so that was actually a good thing because we were able to, you know, talk to them about having respect for nature and, and the beauty of the flowers and how if we leave them there, they'll be shared with everybody. And, and now it's really nice when we pull up with the van, they all run and smell the flowers mm -hmm. and they tell each other, oh, smell this one. Oh, let's share that one. So they're catching on. They're catching on. It's really mm -hmm. nice when we get them in the program young, you know, but we do take kids all the way up to the 12th grade. So that's my, good. My yeah, two kids good. were in the program for the summer and, you know, they enjoyed it. And then okay. after that, they, they went to Great America and then they got a free backpack with oh, that's yeah. right. you all the kinds of school, you, you know, yeah. pencils. We're and in stuff. the process of the backpack program right now. Mm -hmm. um, what we do is we go around to different donors and we get backpacks and then different uh, other programs give us um, school supplies to fill them with. And this year, what we're trying to do is get enough backpacks to do it twice because kids go through them, you know, oh, usually yeah. during the middle of the year, they need a new one. And we're trying to keep a stock of school supplies up um, so that whenever they need them, they don't have to ask their parents or anything. They can just come to us and we'll supply them with everything they need. That's yeah. great. I heard you talking about that earlier in the year that you wanted to do something mid-year because yeah. of the wear and tear on the backpack. So if anyone out there wants to to help out by donating Absolutely. supplies or yeah. backpacks or different school utensils that they, they can use, and even clothes, I heard Renee oh, say yeah. one time. A lot Absolutely. of the kids need school clothes. So if there's any department stores out there that can assist with the kids, they should probably contact you. And what is your number there? Our number is 408-417-8099. And that's actually my direct number. Um, what we're gonna um, think about doing seriously this year is we've seen in the past years that what we need by way of clothing are mostly jackets, mm, okay. mostly jackets. So that's what we're gonna be trying to collect this year. Um, jackets and um, for the smaller kids like rain boots, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. We can't get the teenagers to wear yeah. galoshes, so we're going <laughs> to try to get them for, yeah. <laughs> Umbrellas would work. Yeah, actually that's a good idea. And you can contact us at Native Voice TV at AOL.com and we're always in contact with the American Indian Education Center. Yeah. If you have any donations for them, we'll get them to Kelly and the kids and make sure um, they have a good school year because that's how they succeed, having yeah. a healthy um, a structure yeah. to work with. 
Now tell us about you, Kelly. You're from where? I Are you actually, from this area? I was I was born in San Jose, and um, I was raised in Hawaii for probably half of my young life. Mm -hmm. We came back here in the early '70s at the end of the Vietnam War. My father was a military man, um, and I've been here most of my life. You know, um, my father is Apache. My mother is Northern Cheyenne, mm -hmm. and um, like I mentioned, I have a little bit of California in me. Um, I've been here all these years. I've always tried to be involved in my community. I do a lot of uh, volunteer work, mm -hmm. a lot of community service and stuff because I have kids and I have grandchildren now and we believe that um, we, w well, first of all, we want our children to know who they are. You know, growing up was hard for us, especially being raised in Hawaii and then coming to California. It was really culture shock. Mm -hmm. You know, thankfully enough, um, growing up in Hawaii was nice because all the women stuck together. So without realizing it, they had kind of a, a native sense. Mm -hmm. You know, the culture was very similar there. The, um, the families were all supportive of each other, all the women and all the children. We hung out. It was a nice, beautiful place to grow up in the 60s. So they think you're a Hawaiian native? Sometimes? A lot of people do, I guess, yeah. because... I grew up there. I don't know. I, I guess I have a little bit of the aloha thing happening sometimes. <laughs> it's funny because people always can relate to that. Like I have a friend who grew up in Hawaii. She says, I think you must be Hawaiian. And I said, well, not really. But, yeah. you know, people kind of spot it sometimes. But I, um, get, yeah, I get a bunch of different things. You know, Samoan, not Tongan, once, sometimes once in a while. Hawaiian. I get... Uh, Japanese, you know, you know <laughs> it's yeah. sort of way off the scale. My kids get a lot of that, yeah. you know. My, my kids, um, you know, they have the long eyes and the dark skin and yeah. the black hair, so they, they get a lot of that, yeah. you know. So I think for them, growing up was a little more difficult than for me because, you know, I had a really well sense of being when I was growing up. You know, I had nice parents and stuff, but um, my kids, you know, when we came here, well, when they were... All my kids were born in the 70s and the early 80s, and so they came through a hard time, you know, culturally. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a lot for them to identify with, so that's what um, allowed me to make the choice, you know, to be a huge part of the community. You know, whether it's in the background or whatever, you know, I've always decided that, well, I decided that I needed to really let them know where they belonged. You know, and so that kind of evolved into, uh -huh. you know, being supportive of my children and giving them their identity back. It, you know, now I do it all over the, the valley, I think. That's for, good. Everybody yeah, and you know, it. it's okay. It's that okay it because is. not only that, but my grandchildren, you know, like if we go to functions, community functions, they're the first ones to get up and help, good. you know, and that's, mm -hmm. a, that's a wonderful thing to me. They, they don't have a problem doing volunteer work. They don't have a problem picking up trash. You know, they don't have a problem serving an elder their dish, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. at a dinner and stuff. And, and that's a really good feeling, to know that they know where they belong. You know, there was one thing that impressed me about, I, I went through there one time and I was sitting there and the kids were running around and stuff. And one little kid was kind of being kind of a little rambunctious. And the other kid said, hey, don't act like that. There's uh, an elder here, you know, and he set him straight. And I was like, wow, you know, I didn't have good to say anything. For yeah. Each other. So yeah. it's a good role model for each they other. They do. They do. Yeah. They really look out for each other. They have a really, mm. really good, oh my goodness, for lack of a better word, camaraderie. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they have a really, um, they, they know they belong to each other. You know, when yeah. they see each other at powwows or at other community events, they, they go together, you know, and they, I, I know I can go to a powwow where there's thousands of people, and I know basically my kids will be safe mm -hmm. there because everybody knows them, everybody, right, everybody knows. Everybody looks out for each other. Right, and it's, it's nice. It's nice to go somewhere and, and feel safe about your kids. Now, you speaking know. of powers, I was um, at the, um, I guess it was the Casa de Fruta Power recently, and I know they had some crown dancers there from Arizona, I believe. They yes, flew they in were from there Arizona. from the San Carlos. So let's take a look at that clip. Okay. I have a couple minutes of that. Okay, great.
Wow, that was really impressive. Yeah. Like, what clan of Apache are they? Or? Well, they're from the San Carlos, and I do happen to know they're mixed. Mm -hmm. um, some of them are actually Hikaria, and some mm -hmm. of them are San Carlos. Mm -hmm. um, but they've been dancing together, all related, all uh -huh. those, those men that you saw there. Really, really nice guys, really nice gentlemen. And what clan of Apache are you? I'm Mescalero from Mescalero New Mexico. From New Mexico, mm -hmm. and they have a bunch of different clans, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. wow. No, I, I, I don't know if you know anything about this, but they were saying something about them when they go back, they have to bury the crowns or something yes, like that? Yes, they do. That much I know. Gone dancing um, is really a man thing, so mm -hmm. I'm not privileged to a lot of information oh. about that, but but um, they all put their crowns in the, in the the um, under the ground. You know, sometimes they make new ones, sometimes they don't, mm -hmm. you know, but that's, I, I used to be afraid of them when I was little, so <laughs> I couldn't tell you very much more than Why, that. Why, because of the paint and so forth? What do you think? Yeah, yeah, and because they, um, they represent, some of them represent night spirits, and now, as an adult, of course, I realize that that's, you know, it's a good thing. Actually, I was there with them, and mm -hmm. um, I met their medicine people at, at that powwow they were at, and they're really, really nice, wonderful people, and, and they come all the way out, you know, wherever you ask them um, to bring medicine, to bring good things to whoever they can, mm -hmm. you know, but it, like I said, it's really a man thing, so I'm not yeah. really privileged to a lot of that information. What was, it, what was good about that is traditionally they don't dance at powwows, right? No. Yeah, so no, they don't. it's not a powwow thing. No, Apache yeah. people are not powwow people. Yeah. They have clan gatherings yeah. and family gatherings, but they're really not powwow people. Yeah, just like my tribe, they're, they're not powwow people really? either. So when you said that this uh, group of dancers, they're all related, they're family? Yeah. The rest of them? Yeah, they're all cousins, brothers, uncles. The singers that were there with them were their uncles and stuff, oh, okay. uncles and fathers. Uh -huh. But I've been admiring your necklace here. <laughs> <laughs> it must have a great story. Yeah. <laughs> well, this necklace is really old. Um, it came into my family before I was born, and I, I believe I'm like the fifth generation to oh, wear yeah. this. It's mm -hmm. beautiful. Is it, does it open up? Yeah, I actually oh. put all kinds of stuff in there. <laughs> but um, it does come in Life handy. Lifesavers, no. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people, um, a Cheyenne man, my mother is Northern Cheyenne, mm -hmm. and a, a man at a powwow knows that my mom is Northern Cheyenne. He came up to me and, and was admiring it, and he said, you know, uh, we Cheyenne people, that's like a Scooby snack for us. So <laughs> <laughs> I said, it's already gone. I already ate it. <laughs> what else can you tell us about your people? Um, what I can tell you mainly pertains to my own family. Um, I know that my, my, I grew up hearing stories about being Indian from my grandfather mm -hmm. and um, also from my mother's side, um, being Indian from my grandmother and my grandfather. I was really lucky. I had my great grandmother until I was in my 20s. Um, and they didn't really talk about being Apache. They acted that way. They acted native, you know, mm -hmm. and I didn't realize that's what it was. I thought they were really old fashioned when I was yeah. growing up. You know, my grandmother always had a camp skirt on and, you know, stuff like that. And, and uh, my grandpa was really stoic. He was like the typical Indian man. <laughs> you know, he sat in front of the TV and, you know, hardly moved a muscle and, and he looked really stern, but he was actually a wonderful man. Um, my earliest, memories of learning about being who I was came from him. You know, he talked about uh, being Apache and about what that meant to him and, and you know, um, how proud he was of his sons. All my, my father and all my uncles were military men. And he would say that the old ways of the warrior is gone, but that they were carrying on a new tradition of warriors. Yeah. And he taught us to be proud of our, our father. You know, when my father, my father did three tours in Vietnam and, um, you know, we kind of hated that he was gone when we were kids, and he used to say, no, you be f proud of your father. He's a warrior. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he's a brave man. He's out there fighting for you and our country. So he instilled a lot of pride into our family, a lot yeah. of pride. Um, and they, like I said, they didn't talk per se about being Apache. Um, they did things like 
my grandma taught us how to make Apache kneel down bread, which is real similar to a tamale. Mm -hmm. um, my grandfather taught us how to use um, a wrist rocket, a slingshot. You know, they used to do rabbit hunts with that. Mm -hmm. He told us stories about doing the rattlesnake roundup in New Mexico, about, you know, how they made a living, you know, doing things like that. And um, I didn't realize until I was li until I was older, you know, unfortunately, that that he was teaching us about who we were, you know. Yeah. But um, some of my best memories are from my grandparents, you know, the stories. My, my other grandmother taught us basketry and beadwork and, you know, stuff yeah. like that. And, and you know, Have they you taught your children. Yes. Wow. All my children know how to bead and make a basket. My grandchildren, too. Mm -hmm. Wow. And my grandchildren are also <laughs> traditional dancers, my children as well. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a family drum called the Yellow Feather Singers. And um, they know a lot of old songs. We do a lot of language songs. Mm -hmm. um, we also do a lot of what we call vocables that are that are non-language songs or just um, vocables, just just sounds that um, you know pass emotion out to people. You know, oh, you have to bring them on the show. Yeah, Absolutely, that would be nice. You know, uh, and right now it's an all-girl drum, just mm -hmm. because the the boys are doing other things, and you know the girls are the ones who've stuck to it. But it's a family drum, so it's mm -hmm. okay. It's okay. As soon as um, a couple of the girls, I'm expecting a couple grandchildren right now. So oh. after they have their babies, we'll come. <laughs> oh, good. You keep adding. Yeah, wow. absolutely. That's wonderful. Absolutely. Our still photographer, David's a, uh, an Apache, yeah, too. Yeah, he is. So we're real proud to have him working with yeah, us. Yeah, we as were well. talking earlier. Right? Yeah. yeah, it's always nice to meet brothers. <laughs> Yeah, yeah well, we really appreciate you coming on the show, and I think we do have a couple of announcements. I know the West Valley Powwow is coming up, the 17th yes. annual West Valley Powwow. You'll probably be out there as well. Yeah, oh, absolutely. We'll have the kids the out there. Ones, I know. <laughs> <laughs> the kids will be out there dancing and stuff, so we'll probably is. be out there. 17th West oh, Valley Powwow, great. Saturday, October 1st. That would be a good one. Yeah, that'll be fun. That's yeah. in Saratoga out there. So yeah. everybody come out and join that uh, event because yes. we're kind of winding yeah. down powwow season huh yeah we're going to go into just a short lull really there's actually more um fall and winter powwows coming up so yeah i've noticed than usual that. yeah, so. noticed yeah that, they're yeah. kind of spreading them out throughout the year which yeah. is nice instead of them all being the same weekend i know kind of run here and there <laughs> oh yeah and yeah get them all sometimes in. it's just too much yeah yeah <laughs> it's overwhelming after sometimes. another after another weekend yeah, yeah. especially yeah. when you camp and camp and camp and camp and yeah <laughs> it's a little hard after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it must be tough when you take all the kids out camping you know actually um they're good at it now yeah yeah and my grandkids are like really good at it now oh, so you have them helping you which oh yeah is great <laughs> they know it's half work and half fun but they're uh -huh. good at it and of course Where do you, you take know, them um, we take them to Casa de Fruta Pow Wow. Okay. That's, that's really a, an old family mm -hmm. tradition. I think we've been going there for 18 years or so. Um, wow. Yeah. You know, because we see people there every year from Oklahoma, New York, people who've come over the years, and it's really nice. Yeah, that's really a nice, diverse uh, Pow Wow. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. The crowd is really nice there. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things happening. Beautiful setting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they have the other stuff happening, too, behind the scenes, like the... the, the 2K walk or whatever, it could be oh, 5K, right, I don't know. Right. But you know, the mm -hmm. health walk and the basketball tournament mm -hmm. and stuff like that. A lot of meetings. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's the sobriety powwow, so it's uh -huh. pretty nice. Yeah, it's another safe place for the kids yeah. to be. Good know. inspirational, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I like to go there because they have the, um, the veterans, you know, mm -hmm. the veterans recognition, you know, where you go sign oh, up. That's right. All your them. all your relatives who are veterans and uh -huh. they do the roll call thing and they honor them by giving them a little medal and stuff like that. So yeah. that's always fun. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, that's always fun. So you, you're still taking uh, kids for this year. They can, if someone's interested, they can still give you a call and bring yeah. their kids over. Our enrollment is still open. Um, right now we're on the verge of another transition, but we're still taking kids. We're still accepting kids. We provide transportation to the center, but the parents have to pick them up. Mm -hmm. um, we do, like I said, K through 12th grade. Um, we also do children with special needs. We also help kids who need homeschooling. Okay. You know, um, we have a few new programs, like the homeschooling is kind of new to us, but um, I think it's going to really work out. So do you have computers that the kids can do their homework projects on? And do you We have some antiques. <laughs> Well, I know we you're going to be moving into our facilities. So yeah, we're, we're looking forward to computers. that. <laughs> we're looking yeah. forward to that. Yeah, the kids could really use stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. You know what we really need is volunteers. 
We need volunteers to come and teach the kids computer skills. Um, we need volunteers to come in, help the kids with their art projects, their homework, anything. We always need volunteers there. You know, that's one thing. I don't know if the community understands that, you know, these programs are so underfunded, you know, and it, you just can't have enough staff there to help with, all, with the need. So those of you who are retired or have extra time or have that expertise, please come out and help. Absolutely. Even Contact if it's, us. Yeah. Even if it's just for a half an hour a day, it would make a huge difference, a huge yeah. difference. Wow. So yeah. please help us out here and just contact us at nativevoicetv at aol.com. If you want to become a sponsor, contact us at that same number. Or if you want to become a volunteer, right. either here or with uh, the Indian Education yeah, Center. Absolutely. absolutely. Or any future powwows. Yeah. yeah. We want to thank our sponsors, Mark Rickard with Light Lane Networks, El Observador, pick up a copy in your neighborhood, Center for Training and Careers. Mm -hmm. and become a sponsor of Native Voice TV. So thank you for coming, Kelly. Thank you for having me. See you out there it. on the powwow trail. My pleasure. <laughs>